Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guy. This footage is captured on a brand new gaming laptop, which gives me a chance to not only give you a look at what a good new gaming laptop does in Star Citizen 4.0, but also cover the changes that have been recently made to the telemetry and performance measuring tools that are available inside of Star Citizen. But first, something of an aside, and I want to be very careful about this. Because this is a game and technology channel, I don't want to turn it into a politics channel. So I'm going to try to handle this in the least partisan manner possible. Because while the reasons why I needed to buy a new laptop can best be described as a series of unfortunate events, buying it now instead of waiting was influenced in part by the possibility of it costing a lot more in just a few weeks because of changes in U.S. trade policy. It's also a concern that I voiced earlier about the VKB joystick giveaway, because I buy these giveaways. The joysticks and virtually every laptop sold in the U.S. is assembled and imported from China. So, should you be accelerating your expected purchases of consumer electronics in order to beat prices from tariffs? Well, if the large blanket tariffs being talked about get implemented, the answer is definitely yes. But that's a big if. Judging from his prior term, everything this president says can be divided into one of four categories. First, stuff just said to get elected. Second, just stuff said to get attention. Third, just stuff to threaten others into concessions. And fourth, stuff that they actually will do. Now, all public figures do at least a few of these things, but this president in particular is fond of the first three categories. Which does this blanket tariff rhetoric fall into? Impossible to say. But Elon Musk makes a lot of money in China and needs to stay in good graces with them, too. And as for Jeff Bezos, if bringing the cheap imported stuff to your door isn't Amazon.com's mission statement, I can't think of a more accurate one. To the extent that this cadre of multi-billionaires is the actual driver of policy, the less likely we will actually see these large blanket tariffs. But even so, we may still see targeted tariffs on a specific good, such as laptop computers. But uh, Tim Apple might have something to say about that. But back to the laptop itself. It is a Lenovo that is currently being sold at a fairly reasonable price through Costco. Now, one thing when looking at the specs of laptop computers is that when you see a i9-14900 and NVIDIA 4060, these are the low-power, low-heat versions of these chips, with performance considerably lower than their full-power versions. A desktop system with the full power versions of the same components would do substantially better. So how do you access the performance telemetry in Star Citizen? Well, you start by entering console mode with the tilde key. Then to activate the frame graph that was added in 3.24.3, type in R underscore display frame graph equals one, enter. Then to activate the text-based telemetry, type in R underscore display info equals and then 1 to 3, depending on the level of detail you want to, by entering. And then exit console mode with the same tilde key. Now first, let's look at the newer tool, the frame graph. Now with the number next to frames is not your frames per second. It is your milliseconds per frame. 1000 divided by your milliseconds per frame is your frames per second. Here is a chart with some typical values. The main thing to understand is that while large numbers of frames per second is a good thing, small numbers of milliseconds per frame are good. Why are they using milliseconds per frame and not frames per second? Is because of these other numbers, which are how much time of the total milliseconds was the main thread busy, and how much of the time was the render thread busy. Does Star Citizen really only have two execution threads? No, there are undoubtedly many, many others, but these are two important ones to the frame rate. What do they do? Well, the main thread calculates what is happening in the scene and then tells the render thread to actually show it. Another way to thinking that is the main thread is telling your CPU to do things and the render thread is telling your GPU to do things. And as you can tell, since their time does add up to more than the total time, that they are working in parallel, which is why programs are written using execution threads, so they can execute on different processors in parallel. Think of it this way. Let's say you and a friend are washing dishes after a meal. You are washing and your friend is drying. So while they are drying the last dish you washed, you are washing the next dish. Now, if they are very fast at drying, they will get done first and be waiting for you to get finished with wash and hand them another dish. If they are very slow at drying, then you will be standing there with a wet dish in your hand waiting for them to pick up and drying. 
Now, you can see here that the main thread is taking almost as many milliseconds as the whole frame time, and the render thread is active only for a fraction of the time to do the whole frame. So that means the render thread is getting its work done much faster. So what does this mean as a practical matter, particularly on a laptop system where swapping out a different CPU or GPU isn't practical? Well, it means that you can make the GPU do more work without it affecting the frame rate because you're just reducing the time that it's idle. So you can bump up the quality settings or change the upscaling settings to quality without losing any frame rate. But on a desktop system where you're upgrading separate components is easy, it means that spending $2,000 to upgrade to an RTX 5090 dish towel isn't smart, but spending $500 for a Ryzen 7 9800X3D scrub brush might be. So what about this GPU number? It is always zero, so I expect it is a planned but unimplemented feature. So let's now turn to the text telemetry on the opposite corner of the screen, and even though this is a long-standing feature, some additional metrics have been recently added. The first line is the camera position, which might be useful only if you are trying to precisely recreate a shot. The next four lines illustrate that Star Citizen we are dealing with a nested set of coordinate systems. And so we have from the smallest to the largest, the name of the coordinate zone that we are in, and then the X, Y, Z coordinates inside that coordinate system. So if you're one of the people that have been asking forever for some sort of coordinate system within the game, here it is. But also why it isn't as simple as just one set of three numbers. Then comes the average frames per second, followed by the minimum and maximum within a rolling window followed by the milliseconds per frame. Yes, that same number shown down in the other corner of the graph. Next line is the session ID, which is a GUID uniquely identifying your session with the server. Normally, each time you launch the game, a new session ID would be generated, but if you crash, you can return before your next session times out with the server, and this ID will be used to connect you with where you were when your client crashed. Then comes the shard ID, which is the environment, followed by the server region, followed by the build number, followed by the actual shard number. Usually this would be shortened in actual conversation to US 30. The next line breaks down the distribution of frames by groups of 10. For example, the percentage of frames above 10 FPS, the percentage of frames above 20 FPS, 30 FPS, 40 FPS, etc. The next line shows the total number of players on the shard and the total number of those players on your game server in the mesh. The server recovery report seemed to be an unimplemented feature since it is always zero even if we've seen server crashes. Then comes the authority server, which is also known as the game server. And you see that this number follows much the same format as the shard ID, environment, region, build number, and game dash the actual game server number. The server time is a real-time AWS data center where your region is being managed from. Server FPS, also known as the tick rate, because servers don't actually have a screen, what this is is how long it takes for the server to grab user input since the last tick, process the results, and then send out the results. This can be viewed as one indication of desync problems. Current, average, and minimum server tick rates over the rolling window are given. The next line is the presumed 30th century time in the universe, and then the net ping, which is the time the signal takes to get from your computer to the AWS server center and then back to you. It is mostly a function of the length of the signal has to travel. In other words, how far you are from that AWS server center. The ping plus the server tech rate in milliseconds is the total time for you to send an action and see the results of the action that you took. If the percent loss spends noticeable time above zero, then you are dealing with serious quality issues in your internet signal. The B win and B out is the bandwidth in and out. This is the quantity of information coming each second. If this ever goes and stays at zero, then your connection to the server has been lost. The working set is the quantity of RAM that your system that has been allocated to the game, followed by the same timings of the render and main thread as appeared in the fame graph. As we get near the bottom, we see whether we are currently using Vulkan or DirectX 11 and which sampling technology we are using, DLSS, FRSS, or TSR. The GPU memory is a feature that is not working as it should. The current player location is similar to the zone information above, and the entities and updates are indications of how much work the system is being asked to do to process the game world. 
Like a lot of these pieces of data, they are likely to be more useful to the devs than to players. But still, a lot of information is available. Now for an update on my giveaways. First, we have a special giveaway for the captains of dual VKB Gladiator joysticks. I have a special offer for channel members to earn a chance in a Mariah Guardian just for exploring Pyro's lesser-known locations. And then we have the annual IAE Week giveaway later this year for the Syria shiny stainless steel shipping ship, the Starlancer Max. And then the Grow the Channel Ship giveaway at 20,000 subscribers for the winner's choice of the marvelous multi-role multiplayer mining meta, the Arasta, or the Banu Big Box Bargain Bazaar, the Merchantman. One entry per video member are entered automatically. Everyone else just subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what you need to divide from to get from milliseconds per frame to frames per second. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.